Grizzlies fans, welcome back into another Grizz game day update. The Memphis Grizzlies will take on the Houston Rockets again. Not back to back, but kind of back to back. We played them two days ago. We got them again tonight. Uh, joining me from Houston because he had to leave Memphis after the first game. Kelly Eco, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you for being on today. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. Thanks for leaving. Skipping town as soon as your team lost. <laughs> I had duty calls, I had, to, I had other things to attend to, but I wish I could be there. Uh, it should be a good game tonight for sure. Uh, the Grizzlies have won 10 straight games at home. Tonight's game could clinch a playoff uh, berth for the Grizzlies. Um, I think it's like if they win or if the Lakers lose or if Phoenix lose, there's a whole bunch of things, but a win would clinch it for the Grizzlies. Um, let's start by talking about the last game because right. – a casual NBA fan would look at that game and say, how did the Grizzlies only win by five? The Houston Rockets had the lead with five minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. The Grizzlies right. are a top defensive rated team in the league. The Houston Rockets have a bottom four offense in the league. What did Houston do right last game? I think what you saw last game is kind of what's been building over the last couple of weeks internally in Houston, where, those young guys, they're losing games, but they're playing extremely hard on both ends of the floor. They're at least competing. They're in a lot of these games. Now, obviously, down the stretch, they might falter because, you know, the experience, you know, bad habits, stuff like that. But, you know, they had some impressive wins recently. They beat the Lakers, they beat the Celtics. Um, just playing hard and trying to end the year on a positive note to take that momentum into the offseason is kind of what you've been seeing. So it wasn't a surprise. And they, they particularly like getting up for Memphis, you know, obviously the division rivals. And there's a lot of things going on there um, from, a, from a competitive standpoint. But I think you'll see more of the same tonight. You want to see guys like Jalen Green get after it, Kevin Porter Jr. get after it, especially now that John Moran is back, raising that competitive factor you know, even more. And so John Morant um, was back after missing nine. He came off the bench. And obviously that is a huge spark to anyone's bench to have a superstar come off of it. But uh, mm -hmm. the Grizzlies had 42 bench points. The Houston Rockets, just seven. And now I say that, but in the same sense, there was four guys in the starting lineup who had incredible games for the Houston Rockets. Mm -hmm. Green had 32. Kevin Porter Jr. had a triple-double that no one was talking about, 14, 10, and 10. Kenyon Martin, 31. Shangoon, 25. Dylan Brooks, who did not play in the last game, is back tonight. Obviously, the Grizzlies' defensive sure. stopper. How does that affect the guys scoring, the starters? I think it affects a lot because bringing Dylan Brooks is bringing that tough guy mentality back, bringing that enforcer back. It's going to be more difficult for guys like Jalen Green and Kevin Porter to get a rhythm. You, know, you saw last game, those guys were kind of able to find some kind of groove you know, the spacing was adequate. Alperin Shingun was able to, you know, pick and find his spots. KJ Martin was excellent, 31 points. That was the surprise of the night, really. But bringing Dylan Brooks back, now you have someone that's going to be in your face. He's going to sit on all those ball screens. He's going to get into, you know, trying to push and fight and claw his way to stopping you or shutting you down. So they're going to have to be on their A game tonight for sure. And talk to me a little bit about um, Jaron Jackson Jr. as well. A season high, 37 points from him. What's got to change on the defensive end? Well, um, I actually talked to Stephen Sauce about this before the game, just comparing him to kind of seeing what Jabari Smith can try to emulate down the line. And he talked about, obviously, Jaron's bigger and, and a much more physical player, but the tools are there. So he's been on a scoring streak as of late. You know, he had to pick up the slack, obviously, with John Morant out away from the team. but. You know, it kind of serves them well because the Rockets aren't a good team interior defensively. Jaron is able to punish them inside. He's crafty, he's skilled, you know, he's versatile. He can pick you apart different ways off the dribble, you know, behind the arc, in the paint. And I think for them to kind of slow him down, they're going to have to send two to him, honestly, in the paint. Like, they're going to have to double him, pressure him, trying to force him to get off the ball. But the problem is, this is the Memphis Grizzlies. It's not a, it's not a, a normal team, so... If you double Jaron, he's going to kick the ball to Dylan or he's going to kick the ball to Desmond. or just, like It's it's a lose-lose situation for them, honestly. So they're going to have to just pick their poisons. Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting thing to think about um, defending this new team, especially, you know, like Luke Kennard, who the Grizzlies got in the trade deadline and started right. his group from the three-point line. Um, I will say a stat that both these teams are top five in the league in is rebounding. And the Houston right. Rockets, like you say, just play with so much heart that they did out-rebound the Grizzlies 
uh, on the offensive glass overall. How important will that stat be in this second game? Incredibly important. Um, when you even bring in a guy like Dylan Brooks back, who was good at tech the glass as well, you need to control one part of the game. If you control the rebounds, you can have some say so on how the pace of the game goes, the tempo. And the worst thing the Rockets can do is trying to get into a running match with Memphis because it's going to end pretty bad. Although they had more fast break points than Grizzlies in the they last game, which was wild. That never happened. Yeah, they did. I, that was like that was an unusual stat. But like I said, to control the game as a young team, you want to be an enforcer on the rebounds. You, you know, save those possessions, seal those possessions with a rebound, and be able to kickstart your offense. The Rockets aren't a good offensive team. They need to score easy baskets, and how you do that is getting rebounds and kicking out and going. So. I think uh, if they can't control, you know, obviously they're going to give up a lot of threes. They're going to give up points in the paint. But if you can somehow control the rebounding glass, you may have a shot, as you saw in the first game. Yeah, and the offensive glass as well, because they – I don't have the um, – let me actually see. I have the box score right here. They had 20, 20 – Yeah, 20, yeah. yeah 20. 12 second-chance points, which, again, puts them in the lead – Right. in the fourth quarter so um very important and again that's like effort stuff right like you're talking about these guys playing hard that's right. that's heart that's effort getting those second possessions so right. shall see tonight my last question for you before i let you go take rebounding out of it i suppose fill in this blank if the rockets do blank well tonight they give themselves a chance to win if the Rockets can hit their outside shots tonight, they have themselves a chance. This is the, one of the worst shooting teams in the league. And as a young team, it's incredibly difficult to maintain any kind of rhythm if you can't hit outside shots consistently, especially against a Memphis team that likes to force turnovers and get the ball out and run. So if you can hit threes, the Grizzlies aren't that great of a shooting team as well, but if you can hit threes and kind of give yourself a chance in easier baskets because the driving kick opportunities are there, you know, Jalen and Kevin, they can get to the defense and kick it out to shooters, but it can't just be Jabari. It can't just be, you know, Jalen and him, those three. It has to be a collective effort from everyone. So um, guys got to step up. Guys like Jason Tate will have to step up. KJ Martin Jr. have to step up. You know, even if Shane Green, if he can hit a couple, one or two outside shots to keep the defense honest, they have a chance tonight. So both teams in that first game just two days ago hit 12 threes. Right. They were very even, both shooting mid <laughs> 30 percent is that right. a normal shooting night for the rockets that's a great shooting night for the rockets okay, okay. <laughs> okay. so they can, this, this if they can do that less, again if, if they can if they can bump that to 15 or 16 then they have a real chance but if there's if it's going to be 12 11 10 you know you can just chalk it up <laughs> um, on the flip side the houston rockets allow the most three-pointers made right. by their opponents and the i think second or third highest opponent three-point percentage so for the right. group, that 12 threes at shooting 33 percent was actually really bad so i think it's yeah. a battle of the three-pointers tonight exactly to it's all very it's, yeah, it's all very yeah. kelly thank you again i'm sorry that we'll miss you tonight but um i'll be back you'll be cheering <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Much here for you. <laughs> uh, Grizzlies fans, this one is at 7 p.m. Stay nice and dry. Stay safe out there. And if you're watching from home, this one's on Valley Sports Southeast and the Valley Sports Plus app.